It sometimes happens, sad to say, a little trouble comes your way. This fate befell poor Uncle Fritz, his favorite trousers, who did the splits. <laughs> to Max and Moritz, Uncle's plight was just a cause of great delight. Their joy at his embarrassment was a pleasure quickly spent. For Taylor True, of great renown, a leading craftsman of the town, not only made new clothes to measure, he did repairs. He was a treasure. Uncle Fritz had found a friend and happily was on the mend. For such good deeds, the naughty pair, Max and Moritz, do not care. And their latest undertaking, a new piece of mischief making, concerns the bridge, a single plank spanning the stream from bank to bank. When they're ready, the two boys start to raise an awful noise. With his yardstick in his hand, the tailor comes to reprimand. Help, help! In answer to his cry, two fine geese come swimming by. Grabbing a goose in either hand, he hopes they'll fly him back to land. This, of course, they duly do, saving the life of Taylor True. All the same, the situation is no reason for elation. Taylor True it begins to shiver. Oh, with a cold upon his liver. Now Mrs. True, his faithful spouse, mindful of their marriage vows, cures her husband on the spot with his own iron, nice and hot. To the delight of all good men, Taylor Trues himself again.
From ancient times, the golden rule is that mankind must go to school. Arithmetic and ABC must be learned progressively. <laughs> Max and Moritz do not care for teaching. They've no time to spare. Teacher Trumbull tries in vain his goodly precepts to explain. That of learning, store of treasure, wisdom is the greatest pleasure. Returning to his home at night, gentle Trumbull starts to light the pipe that keeps him company, bringing content and harmony. A simple pastime, you may say, for one who works so hard all day. Max and Moritz know his ways. They think quite hard for several days. <laughs> for the ingredients of a joke lie hidden in tobacco smoke. So one Sunday, while the teacher helps his friend, the village preacher, playing hymns for even song, those two practitioners of wrong sneak out into the evening gloom and creep into the teacher's room while Max holds up the pipe quite steady. A charge of gunpowder is made ready. By helpful Moritz with a grin, he pours the lethal powder in. <laughs> when they have filled the flowing bowl, they're off to take a quiet stroll. They're just in time, those wicked friends. As the last hymn, the service ends. Trumbull, as so oft before, leaves the church and locks the door. Carrying his music sheet in a mood serene and sweet, quiet as a little mouse, he patters to his silent house. Taking his pipe out from the stand, he lights a spill with cautious hand. Leans back to savour that first puff, declaring, This is bliss enough. And as he sits, so quiet and calm, What an explosion! What alarm! and all the contents of the room dance to the resounding boom. As the noise and tumult dies, there upon the floor he lies. Still alive, but what a change. Teacher Trumbull looks most strange. Who can replace the worthy teacher? 
teach the children, help the preacher, who instead of teacher Trumbull will do so much without a grumble. How can the teacher have his smoke when his good pipe's completely broke? Time heals wounds of many a type, but it cannot mend the pipe. Yeah. <laughs>